Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. I'm here with another cheeky book haul. I just saw, I think it's because of that time of year that a lot of good books are coming out and I've spotted some in the bookshop and just couldn't resist. So I think now I will put myself on a book ban only for the, my own sake so that I can concentrate on the books I have. But I will make one exception, which I'll tell you at the end what that is. So firstly, Our Sunburnt Country by Annika or Anika Molesworth. And this is a book about farming and agriculture in Australia. And it was recommended by Mike Cannon Brooks. And I trust his judgment. He's very knowledgeable about climate change issues and future thinking. And so if he recommends a book, I think it'll be worth reading. So this is a young farmer shares how we can grow the courage to protect our land and save our food. So I think there are a lot of issues at the moment with Australia with climate change issues, including drought, bushfires, sustainability, and what the future is for agriculture. Of course, it is important to be able to grow and produce food in some way, um, but is the way that it's being done sustainable? And I'm interested to see, I haven't read a lot about it, and I, I like having sort of issues like this, rather than read about it as headlines in a daily newspaper, to actually take a step back and see what the bigger picture is, and especially if someone has some good ideas for the future. So Annika Molesworth has been learning about extreme weather and what we can do about that in the farming context, and has, has been personally affected by it with her family and their sheep station. She's spoken to farmers and food producers all around the world, and realises that there's a way forward that can be practical and sustainable. So that sounds very hopeful and good. Um, so I'll be reading that one soon. That's Our Sunburnt Country. And, and yes, it's Australian, but I think that will have application and the ideas could be applied, of, of course, to other countries. The next one is Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. And I... I didn't get this, you know, the day that it came out, but then I saw that there, there was this beautiful hardback edition and we don't often get the hardbacks. We often get a trade paperback in Australia. So I got very excited because it's just such a beautiful cover and it has, as I'm sure you would have seen, these beautiful inside papers. Is that what they're called? The end papers, but um, really gorgeous cover. And of course, it's had so much marketing and so much hype. It was immediately a number one bestseller in the UK. And I don't know about other jurisdictions, but very, very successful again by Sally Rooney. And I love that, that it's become an event, you know, that it's bringing the novel, making the novel newsworthy. Um, I think that's wonderful. And Annie and I have just discussed this this morning for the podcast. So stay tuned. That episode will go up in a couple of days. Uh, well, as soon as I edit it, really. I don't know if I should say too much, but we there's a lot to discuss with this book. So I think it's a very, very good book club choice apart from anything else. And I don't think I'll say any more for now, but um, that's Beautiful World, Where Are You? And then I saw, well, this is in no particular order, but Richard Osman, The Man Who Died Twice. And I've been excited for this because I loved, like so many people, The Thursday Murder Club. And I just found it a really cosy, comforting, uh, good murder mystery. And I, I know that this will be in the same vein. It's the same characters set in a luxury retirement village and they try to solve a mystery and I love everything about that. It'll be one to come to when I feel like a, you know, a good murder mystery. This will be one to turn to. So I just wanted to have it on my shelf ready for when I need it. So that is Richard Osman, The Man Who Died Twice. And again, you would have heard a lot about it, so I don't need to say too much more. Another one, these are all very buzzy books. Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead. This is an auto buy because I just loved the Nickel Boys and the Underground Railroad. And I was so excited that Colson Whitehead is writing a crime novel um, set in, I think, in the 1960s. And his, I think the central character is a fencer. So he sort of has a legitimate business at the front and then maybe selling furniture. And then at the back is where he sells stolen goods. I think that's the premise of it. And um, I don't know much more, but I don't need to know any more than that because it's Colson Whitehead and what's not to love. 
Um, and I think it brings back a bit more humour because he's spoken about how he his normal mode of writing is to have some humour in it and to be quite funny. And then when he came to the Underground Railroad, it wasn't so funny. And of course, because of the subject matter of systematic um, racism and slavery in the US. And so, and likewise, the Nickel Boys is quite an intense story. So this one, I think, is a return to using his sense of humour, which I will look forward to. So that's Harlem Shuffle. And that, I think, Annie... I think we'll do this one on the podcast as well. I know Annie has read it or has been meaning to read it, so I'll report back on that one. Another one that I had not realised was coming out but saw some amazing tweets and reviews about this just recently on social media is Matrix by Lauren Groff. And I really enjoyed Lauren Groff's Fates and Furies. And she used to be a poet and I found the writing in Fates and Furies was so on point and so well crafted. And she came to Adelaide Writers Week and it uh, was wonderful to see her discussing that book. And I'm so excited that she has a new novel coming out, but also because it's been getting this amazing praise So on the front, it says a story about women in power that will blow readers' minds. That's Emma Donoghue. So that's a big call. Um, Britt Bennett has says it's epic and intimate, um, electrifying, sparkling, a propulsive, captivating read. Um, Sarah Waters says an audacious piece of storytelling with passion, wisdom and magic. Um, Daisy Johnson, who I do trust for reviews, says luminous, divine, her masterpiece and that really sells it for me but also I think it was Garth Greenwell I could be wrong or Max Porter on Twitter was raving about it recently so I'm very excited for this and I don't know much about it 17 year old Marie too wild for courtly life is thrown to the dogs expelled to become the prioress of an abbey so that has a lot of promise immediately I quite like that 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 whole concept she misses her secret lover Cecily and Queen Eleanor um, but she's got her life at the Abbey now and then she's amongst or she's born into a line of women warriors and crusaders so she's charting a new course and she will bring herself and her sisters out of the darkness and into riches and power so this sounds very very interesting so um, looking forward to that matrix by lauren groff another one that annie also wants to read so this might come up on the podcast as well and then this one i just bought without knowing anything about it other than it's just been shortlisted for the Booker Prize and that just goes to show the power of those shortlists because it was one of those things where I'd just seen the shortlist and then I saw this in the bookshop a few hours later and so I thought well you know I just have to see what this one's about I was curious to see it to see what it was about so um, that's The Fortune Men by Nadifa Muhammad And again, it has lots of good blurbs. It has Carmilla Shamsi saying, a writer of great humanity, chilling and utterly compelling, a novel of tremendous power. So more understated blurbs, would you say, than the ones for Matrix, but that's okay. It might be a more subtle book, but it looks intriguing and I like the cover. Nadifa Muhammad is an author I haven't read before, so I'm intrigued by that. Um, I don't know anything about the story at all. I have nothing for you. Long regarded as one of our most promising young novelists, Muhammad has fully arrived with the fortune men. Where does it say what it's about? Oh, here we go. So in the inside cover, it says that Mahmoud Matan or Matan is a fixture in Cardiff's Tiger Bay, 1952. Bustles with Somali and West Indian sailors, Maltese businessmen and Jewish families. He's a father, chancer, petty thief, smooth talker with an eye for a good game. But he's not a murderer. So when a shopkeeper is killed and all eyes fall on Mahmoud, he isn't too worried. Well, this doesn't sound like it bodes well for him. Uh, He is secure in his innocence. At home, his little boys are waiting for him. And it's only in the run-up to trial that it dawns on him that he's in a terrifying fight for his life. And under the shadow of the hangman's noose, he begins to realise that the truth might not be enough to save him. So that actually sounds a bit 
depressing. So I hope it all comes good in the end. But um, let's see. I will report back on this one, The Fortune Men by Nadifa Muhammad. Um, but I love the sound of the setting and the characters of this one. So it sounds interesting. So that is it. That's my book haul part two and that will be it now for the next little while I don't know how long I'll last with the book ban but I will make an exception for bewilderment by Richard Powers which is coming in the next few weeks and I'm very excited about partly because I loved the overstory by him which was also shortlisted for the booker partly because this has been shortlisted for the 2021 booker but also because people have been really raving about it those who've read it it must have come out already in the UK but I think Eric Carl Anderson loved it and I can't think who else but it's been getting a lot of praise so I'm excited for that one um, so stay tuned and let me know what you've been reading and I will see you soon bye for now